Okay, so continuing with area of regular polygons, our next polygon is a quadrilateral. So we normally think of a regular quadrilateral as a square. Um, so let's go ahead and draw a regular quadrilateral. What makes a square a square, by the way? Uh, all equal sides. So again, just to re refresh your memory, a regular polygon has all equal sides, but it also has all equal angles. So regular polygons are all equal sides and all equal angles. So I may have misspoken yesterday. I think I might have, I don't know if this class, I made a comment about a rhombus or something where he's off the wall. So squares are regular quadrilaterals. Um, and just like the triangles yesterday, squares, uh, any, any regular polygon, just like the triangle, will have a center, it will have a radius, and I'll have an apocalypse. So the center is where the angle bisectors intersect. So if we bisect each of these four angles, so there's one, bisect that angle, bisect that angle, then they should come pretty close to meeting, and depending on how good you are at drawing a square, if your square is exact, then you're, they'll intersect exactly in the middle. Mine's a little bit off, but I'm going to call that C for a second. The radius is a segment connecting one of the vertices to the center. So notice that this square has four radii. I'm just going to draw one of them. I'm going to label it R for radius. And we still have the apothem, which is the uh, segment that connects the center to the midpoint of one of the sides. Um, really all the sides. But, so we have four different apothems possibly. They're all the same. But that's a right angle, the perpendicular. And I'll call that A. Lowercase a. Now think about this a little bit more. Uh, we're bisecting this angle right here, which would make this angle right here half of the larger angle, which makes it 45 degrees. And so if this is 45 degrees, and then we've got a 90 degree angle, and then a 45 degree angle, then this is one of our other special right triangles. This is our other special right triangle. We only have two of them. Yesterday we saw 30, 60, 90, and today we've got 45, 45, 90. So just a quick refresher on a 45, 45, 90 triangle. That's an awful 45, 45, 90 triangle. So there's 90, there's 45, 45. So despite the way my picture looks, because it has two equal angles, what else do we know it has? It's a side. So if we call uh, this side X, then this side would also be X. And then the hypotenuse is X times the square root of 2. So it's about 1.4. And we could derive that using the Pythagorean theorem. Notice if we do a squared plus b squared, we would have x squared plus x squared, which is 2x squared. And then to find this length, we take the square root of that sum, so the square root of 2x squared. Well, the square root of 2 is just that, the square root of 2, and the square root of x squared is x. Forget this, you can derive it using the Pythagorean theorem, but it's usually faster and easier just to memorize this. Yeah, what's up? Is x uh, square 2, is that 2x? Like, did you do 2x and the square root of that x? No, it would be equivalent to the square root of 2x squared. So no, you'd have to, you would have to do x times the square root of 2. You could do um, the square root of 2, whatever that is, times x, that would be okay. Right, but not, it's not the same as, it's not square root of 2x. That's not. All right. Which means, on our picture here, if this side is A, that side must be A. Right? The apothem is the same as this segment right here. And that means the hypotenuse here, the R, the radius, is A times the square root of 2, or A root 2. If we look at the apothem from this perspective. So there's my apothem. How much of the side is the apothem? Half. It's half. And so it stands to reason that the side length here would be twice the apothem, 2x. Okay. Which is similar to what we saw yesterday with the triangles. Um, so we can, because a square is a regular polygon, we can use the area formula we saw yesterday. The area formula for a regular polygon, the one half for a third times the And we're going to practice that today. I now want to start off by saying our goal today is not to find area of squares. So finding areas of squares is not the point. The point of today is to use this new formula to find the areas of squares.
In other words, we're going to convince ourselves this formula gives us the area for a square so that when we get something that's not quite so easy to check, like a hexagon or a 27-gon, then we trust that the formula works. Okay, so the goal is not to get the areas. We can get the areas very easily using various So I start by writing this formula area. Apothem capital P is perimeter. So we need to find both the apothem and the perimeter. In this figure, are we given either one? Uh, okay, we're given the apothem is eight. And we can find the perimeter doing what? Why times four? Why not times three? Okay, because a square has four sides. Okay, so we've got four times 16, which gives us a perimeter of 64. And so our area would be one half times eight times sixty-four. So half of eight is four, and four times sixty-four is two hundred and fifty-six. Now, on a side note, again, what's the other formula for area squared? If we know the side length. Okay, all, everything you guys said, but and since it's a squared are the same, right? So it would be 16 times 16 or 16 squared. And what is 16 squared? 256. 256. Exactly. So again, the goal is not to find uh, But our goal is to use this in formula to determine the scenario. Like we to get more complex. Example, find the area of the square. So we're given side length 24. So square got equals one half also on the perimeter. And so Matthew suggested that we already know the apostle. What's the apostle going to be? 12. Why is it 12? So if we look at this segment right here, if you if you think of it like this, this red line is the exact same as the side length, right? So if I slide this over, that blue line, by definition of a possum, the fact that it starts in the middle and goes to one of the sides, it must be exactly half of it. Okay, so we know our possum. How do we find our perimeter? Okay. It's 424, which is 96. And so we have our area is a half of 12 times 96. Six times 96 gives us 576. Okay. Now again, just to confirm our answer, so we can, because because it's a square, it's, it's fairly easy to check if we got this correct area. If it had 25 sides, it'd be much more challenging to check for sure. So the area here would be 24 squared, according to how we normally find the area. And 24 squared, well, that's 576. Next example. So using the same formula, area equals one half bottom times perimeter. So in this problem, what are we given? Okay, we're given the apothem. So the apothem is square root of three. So we need to find the perimeter. In order to find the perimeter, we need to figure out the side length. So we look at uh, this. This is half of the whole length. So this length must be two square root of three, which means that the perimeter would be four of those, right? So four times two root three, which is eight square root of three. And I challenge you today to try to do this, this entire assignment without the double. I challenge you. Okay. Some of you will rise in the challenge, and some of you will walk away from the challenge. So that's my challenge. To try doing this simple without the calculator, especially after watching me do the examples where I'm going to do it without the calculator. Okay. 
So we've got one half, the hypotenuse square root of three, and the perimeter is eight square roots of three. Now the way you do this on the calculator is you look at it and say, well, what operation is going on between all of these numbers? Being multiplied. Being multiplied. And since the multiplication is commutative, we can multiply in whatever order we want. Right. In other words, 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. So we can look at this and say, well, I've got a half times square root of 3 times 8 That's times square root of 3, and I can multiply in whatever order is convenient. And by convenient, I mean easiest. So if we, we can multiply the half and the 8. Since 8 is even, half of 8 is pretty easy to do. What's half of 8? 4. Four. 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 And if we multiply a square root by itself, it's like squaring the square root, in which case the square root goes away, and we're left with the radicand. So we have 4 times 3. And 4 times 3 is what? So, okay. 4 root 3 would be like 2 of the sides, right? Yes. Okay, so if you do 4 root 3, so that's 6.9282, and if you add it to that, that's 1.5. No, you would, so if you wanted to check your answer, you'd want to do area equals side squared. So we'd have 2 square roots of 3 squared. Now notice the parentheses I put here. That tells me that I'm grouping this. I'm going to square 2 square root of 3. Now the way we square these numbers is we have to square each number individually. So 2 squared is 4, and square root of 3 squared is 3, and 4 times 3 is 12. Okay. Next example. What are we given on example 4? What is this called? Radius. Given the radius. So our area formula doesn't have radius in it, but Kind of like yesterday, we can find the radius, we can find everything we need with the radius. We can find the side length and the perimeter, or the uh, positive and the perimeter. So let's go ahead and finish by drawing our apothem. I'm going to label that A. That's my apothem. So how are A and this radius related? Because it's half, or not, not the other half, but the next. So this side is, yeah, so it's a 45, 45, 90, so this side is the same as a times the square root of 2, which means that we can say a squared of 2 is equal to the square root of 7. So to solve this, we divide both sides by the square root of 2. So we get a equals, now there's a, there's a useful way to write square root of 2 divided by square root of 7. Uh, sorry, that's right around. Square root of 7 divided by square root of 2. Uh, we can write it as one big square root. In other words, we can put the whole fraction underneath so we don't keep putting the square root symbol twice. The square root of 7 divided by square root of 2 is the same as the square root of 7 over 2. Which I'm going to leave it in exact form. I'm going to leave it in exact form because I want to do this without the calculator. My goal today is to do this without the calculator for the most part. So I've got my opossum. So then how long is my side length? Uh, Two, 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 square root two A's, right? So two square roots of seven over two. Okay, so let's say we've got a potham, square root of seven over two. We need the perimeter. Well, the perimeter will be four of these guys. So we'll have eight, eight square roots of seven over two. Now again, I'm leaving this in exact form. One kind of is a challenge, but even, even, even more important than that, I'm hoping that since I keep seeing these square roots, and I saw this last one in particular where they kind of, I multiplied and they went away. I'm hoping that every time I do this problem, I'll get something similar happen, where the square roots will multiply by each other, and the square roots will go away, and this will actually be fairly simple to simplify. You got 2, 7 over 2, square root 7 over 2, how? How'd you get that? You press. Right here? Because there's two of them. It's not enough. So our apothem would be square root of 7 over 2. And then our perimeter is 8, eight, eight square root of 7 over 2. So we can, again, we can kind of use the same idea we did up here. 1 half of 8 is 4. And then a square root times itself, we just get the radical. We get 7 over 2. And now if we multiply, we multiply 4 times 7, which is 28. 28 divided by 2 is. Okay. 
Okay, so guys, right. So Adrian has a question. She says, "Can we just quit and listen to calculus?" The answer is, sure, absolutely. Again, I challenge you. It's not a waste of time for you to practice with knowledge, especially if you take a after geometry, most of you do, and especially if you plan on staying in pre-AP, which most of you do. So it's good use of your time to practice doing this stuff without a calculator. Okay. Very good use of your time. Finally, uh, find the area of this square whose diagonal is 79 miles long. So we need to draw a square. Uh -huh. We don't have a picture. Now, where is the diagonal going to go? Across. Across. Okay, so that's a diagonal. Okay, let's use some vocabulary here. What are these? Okay, so vert, what about vertices? The, the top left vertices to the bottom right vertices. Okay. The top left vertex, vertex to the bottom right vertex. Is that the only diagonal? No. How many diagonals are there? Two. Top, top right and bottom left. And since I'm uh, right-handed, it's easier for me to write the other way. So I'm going to do my diagonal the other way. I'm left-handed. I'm left-handed. Okay. Then write the other way, because it'll be easier for you to write above the numbers going this way. Right? Yeah. You're right-handed down there. Oh, okay. I did because I've been using a calculator because I'm too lazy. Um, so I got 56 percent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm glad you. Okay. I'm glad you did that. So what happened on on example four? Is what's very common. Okay. Shh. Typing this in is really easy to do wrong in your calculator. If you work this out without the calculator, you can get down to something like this. And then even if you're not sure to multiply this, it's easier. To, chances of you typing this in wrong are very unlikely. The chance of you, I would probably most of you, with how much attention to detail you guys pay when you type in the calculator, which isn't very much. A lot of you make weird mistakes in the calculator. You don't catch them until I come and point it out. Um, I would give you about a 50-50 chance of typing this line incorrectly, believe it or not. Most of you, I give you on, on an individual problem at a random basis, I would give you about 50-50. About half of you would type it in right, and the other half would type it in wrong. Okay, Which is why, I, again, it's worth your time doing this without the calculator so when you get an erroneous answer, a wrong answer on the calculator, you go, wait a second, that's not right. And you can look at it and figure out what you did wrong. I'm not going to answer your question, Weston, because I want you to look at it and figure out what you did wrong. I did, and I typed incorrectly. You didn't. I'm not going to argue with you. The answer is 14. I typed, you can even go look, but I'm not using it for roots. Oh my god, is that right? Then you're doing the problem. No, 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 I'm using it for roots, but I'm No, 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 no. But then, but no, you're, then you're doing it wrong. I'll be happy to show you. I'll, have, I'll be happy to show you after I finish going over the last example. Okay, so finishing example five. But again, Wesley, that's that's my entire case in point. Is you're doing something wrong in the calculator and you can't figure out what it is because, as you said, you're being lazy. So. Huh? I just tied it. Yeah. No, no, you're, you're making some mistake, Wes. I'm not sure what it is. I'll feel happy with that. Okay, so going back to example five, but Wes, Wes, the calculator side. We'll look at it, we'll look at it, I promise. We'll look at it. Okay. All right, so what does the diagonal have to do with anything else? Why? Okay, so half the diagonal is the radius, and so we've got 79 over 2 is our radius. And so how does that help us find our apothecary? Because that's, that's 8 is 45.59. Okay, so this will be also known as a squared of 2, which means a squared of 2 is equal to 79 over 2. So finding the apothem, we divide by square root of 2 on both sides. And so our apothem is this lovely 79 divided by 2, all divided by the square root of 2.
we still need our perimeter. So if our apothem is 79 over 2 over square root of 2, how long is our side? It's two of those. It's two of those. So it'd be, we have 79 over 2 times 2, we get 79. So our side length here is 79 over the square root of 2. So then we, we multiply this by 2. 79 divided by 2 times 2 is 79. How many of those do we need for the perimeter? Four. Okay, so our perimeter is 4, 79 over square root of 2. Now again, notice how I'm not simplifying the whole part. It simplifies and I don't need to use the calculator. Okay. Or if I do, I'm going to wait till the very last minute because typing in area equals 1 half of Potham times the perimeter. So typing in 1 half times 79 over 2 over square root of 2 times 4 times 79 over square root of 2. Again, I'm giving you about chance to type it in without making a on the first try. Take that challenge. Uh, but I would rather you take the challenge that I first gave you, which was try to do the calculator. So let's let's look at this. Now again, we're multiplying some different numbers here. Because multiplication is commutative, we can multiply in whatever order we want. And there's another really useful trick when you're doing stuff like this. Guys, okay, with fractions. You can rearrange anything in the numerator. Okay, so like the 79 over 2, I can put over here instead of the 79. I can flip them around, I can move anything I want, or anything in the denominator. So I don't have to do anything in this particular order. Numerator is independent from denominator. You may, you may come across when you're working your But here we can go ahead and do one half of four. What's half of four? So I got two. So 79 over two over square root of two times 79 over square root of two. Now here we've got uh, two times 79 over 2 times 79, that's the numerator. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that all at once. So 2 times 79 over 2 times 79. And that's really what this would be without, if I drop parentheses, I'd have that whole thing. Over square root of 2 times square root of 2. Well, it gives us just 2. Which multiplies square root by itself. Because we get square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4, and square root of 4 is 2. So now, well, we've got 2 times 79 over 2. So those 2 can divide out. So I've got 79 times 79 over 2, which is just 79 squared. How many of you think you can type this in the calculator correctly? Yeah, I would hope all of you would tell me on the top. How many of you would be willing to bet $100 you can type this in the calculator correctly? Oh, let's go. That's a good bet. I always make a whole lot of money. Good. Type the calculator correctly. How about... If you put this on a test, and I was, you didn't just work it out for you, and you had to do it all the
Okay, so so the perimeter is 11. What does that tell us? Why is that useful? Wait, wait, hold up, hold up, back up. So, break that up into steps. Why are we dividing by four? Because that's not what size. Okay, so the perimeter is 11. Each side would be 11 over 4. And then you said, do what now? So the problem is half of the side length. So if we divide 11 over 4, we divide that by 2. Okay, so 11 over 4 divided by 2 is 11 over 8. You think about it like this, 11 over 4 divided by 2 is the same as half of 11 over 4. Right? And if you multiply a half times 11 4, 1 times 11 is 11, 2 times 4 is 8. Okay. So when you're trying, short cut for what you're doing, fraction is half of it, you double the number. So our apothem is 11 over 8. So our area would be 1 half times 11 over 8. Now again, you guys are really good at Any other questions on these examples? Yeah. 